uh, they, I don't know, something about them right now is, uh, I'm really feeling the vibe. That's all I got. Well, I'm excited as well, like, let's just let's go with that. Let's not try and analyze it, let's just, you know, hang on to the excitement and see what they can bring us here. And it's gonna be starting on the T side, MIBR on the CT side. They've left Fallen alone in the B-bomb side, and that in itself is a scary prospect. They're all coming, he's falling back, and that's so scary. He could have got caught at the corner there, but he's still alive, and they're gonna smoke him off instead of trying to hunt him down. I would have said... There's a part of me that wanted me to just like go to the corner and just fight, but that is risky. Now it's going to be a 5 on 5 retake instead as the bomb goes down. Yeah, it's equally risky to play in a 5 on 5 retake at this B bomb site, so yeah. Unfortunately, Fallen's not able to get the information and pull the rotation over quick enough, and now surveys the first step. Can they clear this out? Zeus looks the wrong way. It was turned maybe for a flashbang. Fallen threw one over for him and trades all across the board, and this is somehow working perfectly for the Brazilians. So much better than you could have expected. Fur with a double kill, and now Ariel in the back. You can still do this. They've smoked it up on top, but nobody's defusing. Finally, there's the kill. And Fur, not the one with the kit, but still going to have enough time for it, I believe. That is very, very close. And I mean, if he gets that last kill in there, so it's a one-on-one, -on -one, probably could end up uh, winning the round anyway. Yeah, I mean, Taco did have a kit, right? He might yeah. have been able to come back and miraculously jump in the smoke and get the defuse. Regardless, triple kill for Fur on the retake, and that always that always makes things easier. It does. Uh, so surprising. You can't rely on those retakes in the B-bomb site, but fair play. Work this time for him. Good battles for Fur. That's actually a disgusting sequence, and obviously precision there right at the end. One to nothing for the Brazilians. And Fur goes straight into an AWP. All right. I mean, listen, you get a hot start. Why not just keep trying to roll with it? See what you could do. They needed uh, double digits, I believe Chad was saying, on the, on the CT side. I think that's probably true. Yeah, there, there probably is some element of truth, especially because this map has been such a betrayal at times for, for MIBR side. Fighting up against two AK-47s, a couple of Deagles, and an MP7 there on Lexi. Head armor on everybody but Fur, so most of this should be just fine if they run in the MP7. Otherwise, that can actually be a pretty powerful weapon. It's just such an interesting idea, Fur with an AWP, and here's the other tough part. If Ents just go back to this B bomb site with these four players, and you put someone who's unaccustomed to the op into a retake scenario, that's going to make things way more difficult, but Lucas somehow just takes a quick peek with the SMG. Couple headshots onto Sergey. Yeah, that was all it took. Kind of trying to clear out top mid as well. Ariel and Alu are over there just, you know, keeping an eye on things, making sure that uh, they're not getting flanked or anything like that. That's actually a common problem on Inferno if you're too much focused on staying outside of B. Well, they're about to walk right into the AWP. We'll see what first got. First kill goes his way. That'll put him on notice. Now you don't want to mess with Rap side whatsoever. And even first starting to cheat and lean over towards that B bomb site, perhaps realizing. Maybe even subconsciously that, you know, at this stage of the game, three on five, the only thing left to do for the T side is just try and hit that B bomb site with some set smokes. Yeah, and that's why that Molotov is so well timed. You know, it's down to 20 seconds now. They need to move right back to this Molotov side. It's going to be quick as well. 20 seconds, the flashback a little bit too late, in fact, and they're going to lose one in the corner there. Lucas now just trying to buy some time for the rest of his team to get there. Alan will take him down, and Fur could not see anything. The smoke there towards CT spawn making that impossible. The bomb will go down. And now it's a two on two here for the two and three, sorry, for the after plant. This is winnable. It all depends on what Fur can do on this retake. Holding him at the moment. X7 sees the shadow. He commits to it. Runs out of bullets, though. That's gonna give Fur the courage to push forward, but he can't get anything done. Zeus has one more, and it's just Alu back to the bomb site. Zeus gonna turn the corner first. He's down. Alu trying to do everything he can, but the SMG is gonna win again. And Taco's got the kit. He can go pick up the AWP as well after the defuse, and he's loud. Yeah, yelling at them, that's great. I'm really enjoying that. I mean, we talked about it briefly yesterday, but we really need the, that Brazilian flavor to come back into this team. Whatever, whatever it looks like later, just... Yeah, do it now. Keep that. Just get yeah. into it. Well, I mean, that's, that's the funny thing. I actually was talking to them a little bit about it, because it is always the question when you know there's going to be an impending roster change after the Major, right? A big question is always, you know, do you want to... Are you going to practice with this guy who's going to be coming in in two weeks? Now, it's, it's odd because he was on another team that was also competing in the Major. So, MIB was very much committed to this concept of, like, we're going to practice and play with Zeus leading into this. And then, you know, we're going to try and get Legend stage. Let's just avoid all the complications the next time around. Yeah. A bold move, but, you know, I kind of respect it. 
Sue's going to be pushing in each she backed into this position with the Formacity actually old with the help of Lucas there. They pick up the kill, could have easily been another one. Ariel in a lot of trouble, and that's the bomb down. Lucas, does he, oh, he hangs around because Taco's up in the apartments. Man, I think they just mentioned that, that aggression in second mid, and we see a lot of it right here. Sergey going to be going down to fur over at the other side of the map, and that's just confusing for Ents. Well, uh, the crazy thing is, I'm wondering if this is maybe something that teams have started to like practice with and everything, because we don't see those kinds of alt mid pushes too frequently. Yeah. We saw one earlier from North, and they pulled it off spectacularly, and all of us kind of looked at each other and just said, when was the last time you saw an alt mid push from the CT side that worked that well? And again, more effective aggression from the CT side. That one's all Lucas, just kind of throwing caution to the wind, knowing he can get picked off at range, but just trying to get into cover for that one kill into underpass. That worked out very well. Alexi now hoping to sneak in a kill on somebody a little bit late in this round. But they're very defensive, and they have no reason not to be. There's just nothing that they can really accomplish by hunting him down. Lucas gonna get the last kill as well. That's MIP up now. 3 0 against Ents as we head into round number four. And um, we'll see how long it takes for the Finnish team to turn this uh, around and start to really pick up a couple of rounds here in their favor. I feel like though it, there is a funny, there's something funny about yelling at ends because I feel like they're the one group of people who just, you know, will be the least affected by it. Listen, the the poison, like uh, you know, the, the things they showed at Katowice for their first time on a major stage, that that's the stuff of legends. I don't think you're going to get into their head whatsoever. If, no. if that crowd that didn't bother them whatsoever, playing on that stage didn't bother them whatsoever, a few shouts in Portuguese isn't going to do it either. Oh my God, they saw them actually. I mean, they're going to throw the grenades and everything over and banana, but that was um, that was quite something. Running into the fire as well, that, that's a lot of people gone just to grenade. That's a lot of utility damage. Fallen, I think, even adding insult to injury and grabs one right through that half wall as well. They try and get the bomb, another Molotov, flames again, spreading out in the path events. They've got no utility, just these pistols. Retreat is cut off by Taco as well, who does not need to push forward. At least one, more than likely both, and he's got two headshots. Four to nothing for this defense, and four players surviving as well, so the money grows and builds. Yeah, that's really the crucial aspect as well, isn't it? It's one thing to be winning, but you want to make sure that they can't just swipe it away from you with a single victory. Fifth round. Creek being picked up. They've got all the grenades. This is looking like a good round, so we'll see what ends. Well... Either they would have learned something already in the first four rounds, or they just have a sort of a, a set strat plan that they, they're just going to try and see if they can test. So I'm curious to see how this is going to play out and how much they're going to be doing over at Banana. Alu and Sergey just kind of showing up to throw some grenades, but not really committing to it. No, not after last round. Yeah. Not after you just got barraged. That'll keep you away for a bit. But obviously some kind of stance outside of it, looking for the flashbang over, and Sergey's going to go right through with the cover of a deep Molotov. Three other players posturing towards mid. And again, this defense from uh, from MIBR, it's fallen on the aid of UP now, which is a bit more comfortable. Him and Lucas are going to switch positions in CT spawn. So for the moment, there's a bit of a blind spot on Rap side, and that's exactly where Ants is headed. Yep, Ooh, a little bit of a peek there. Lucas could have gone down already. Fallen is back with the AWP, but the grenade will take care of him. That's beautifully done by Alex CP. Now for waiting, he's smoked off right now. Taco will take down Ariel and Ends. They had all this positioning, but they've been slowed down a lot, and they're taking a fair bit of damage too. I feel like they wanted to be quicker than this, and now Taco coming out, looking, almost taking down Alo. That was nearly a kill. Zeus is going to be dropped inside the bomb side, and now it's all on Fallen. That was the bomb in front. Still another three players to go, but. Is this doable? If they if they make any kind of a mistake here, if you get the one kill, then the rest are low on health. I think Fallen's gonna back away from this. Oh, he might not know, I guess. Yeah, well, MIBR, that, that actually could have gone much better for them. Taco trying to get out of pit, trying to get some information, and Lane gets picked off. Remember, he had a phenomenal game yesterday. I think he was at 27 kills, Yeah, uh, which was which is pretty disgusting. Zeus as well inside the bomb site. Everyone, kind of their nerve just faltered as soon as Ents turned those corners. One thing to notice is how quickly Fur rotated from the B bomb site. He was over there so fast when they got in that, that information. That is like, he leaves the B bomb site. They're not even worried about it being a fake. He's just saying, let's handle this part of the attack, and then we'll, we'll figure out what happens from there. But let's make sure we stop this, and obviously, didn't pan out in any way. No, but it, I mean, it, it looks to me like it was close for a minute. It slowed things down massively because of the Molotov usage from him and Fallen on the rotation over. Lucas was there as well because they were trying to switch their spots. So, I mean, there was a lot of presence that, that actually slowed down that hit, which I thought was going to give Zeus and Taco the time needed to get comfortable again. Very interesting. 
Olin with that one kill towards the end. I don't know, I mean, it would have been hard maybe to know how, how low health they were. I don't know, even if he had no, maybe it still would have made sense to try and go for it. I, I, I don't mind the fact that he saves, especially that early on. Because obviously, yeah. yeah, the one versus three is so tough. If the bomb had been more, like, fortuitous and where it dropped, I think that might have, you know, prompted him to stay stay around. Yeah, But it did kind it. of roll right towards the bomb site for Ents. Well, that saved AWP. Could do a lot here on Banana. Shooting for the wall, or if anyone tries to jump. Flashbang, and the timing is just so good for Fallen. Just thinking about it. Lucas, though. Maybe trying to use the shot over on the other side of the map to cause a bit of a distraction for the peak, but either way, it did not work out, and he goes down to Ariel. Have to assume there was some kind of flashbang for him. He was all on his own. The yeah. other two players deep into the bomb site, no backup. Perhaps a self flash, perhaps one over the wall from a teammate. Either way, it's a four on four, spreads out the defense, but they're confident in Fur's position at the B bomb site. He's boosted up, so they're just going to leave him alone. Fall in with the op in lane as well. Taco to cover his back in halls. Nice boost over at B to allow him to swing that extra player over. This is all on Taco. It really is. They're going to be coming out of this apartment. Presumably there's going to be a flashbang. And if that, if that touches Taco, I don't see how he can possibly find it. There's a flashbang going over. He does go behind. It still does a little bit. Fall, he's going to get straight jumped on. And now Taco inside the bomb side will pick up Ariel. He was already low on health. He goes for a second fight. He's actually going for the third. Down in the pit as well. Taco doing so much work. And finally they shut him down. And this time, unlike the previous round, Fur is really far away. That little half second of Taco being blinded. Yeah. He just couldn't protect Fallen. Not enough time for Fallen to spin and actually react, but Fur in this one versus two. He's got X7 inside the site with low HP, but this is a tough crossfire to crack. Molotov in the pit does nothing, but he can't really know that. He has to try sneaking out. Ooh, sees a little bit. Still not sure where the second player is, and just the lack of information alone makes these positions really hard to come out on top of, and Lexi will shoot him right in the back, so... That'll be another round for Ents. That corner is almost an impossible one to clear if you don't know someone is there. Such a big risk to just ignore every other part of that bombsite. Part of what makes yeah. retaking A so difficult. Both bombsites in this map so difficult. So 4-2 to two and Ents have, uh, have done it after a pretty cool start from MIBR. We saw that alt mid push. We saw some fast rotations, but Ents have cracked them and they've taken all the money away. Finding a good... Uh... Good little rhythm here on the finished side. Let's see if they can f keep that up. Right now, they should have a, a bit of space to breathe in just the fact that, what is there, like a P250 on Taco, and that's it. So it shouldn't be much of a fight coming out here from the Brazilians. So it's a cool boost. You like to see this. Yeah, we just see all too many times. You know, cool boosts, cool strategies, cool stacks. Just don't have the firepower to make it work. Yeah, well, you only do them, don't you, when you when, when you, know, you have the weaker firepower. When yeah. You're like, yeah, you, you know, need that little advantage. At least it will be funny. And there's no way. Ants, you can see, spread out across the map in a default. There's no way they commit off any kind of contact. This is Alexi and Sergey just peeking into the B bomb site, testing the nerve of the defenders, seeing if they can get any information. It might be the players over at A, now attacking up middle, getting bracket control, smoking off left mid. They're the ones Did who are somebody saying there's no presence. Knife aerial or hit him with a grenade or something? He Could just took damage for nothing over on that side. Okay, yeah. Maybe someone just pre-fired an angle, shot him in the back. Got to be careful with, uh, with all that stuff. Seventh round here. And now they're sneaking through, they're going, to be, they're going to be having Ariel actually all the way in Arch and looking into the A-bomb site. And with 30 seconds, surely he's going to call this soon and say, listen, there's really nobody here. They are throwing the smoke. I'm worried about the time now. They're going to try and see oh, if they no. can crunch the B-bomb site. It's the wrap-up yeah, They are committed to it, and this, this position is going to be really powerful. Nobody, well, they are looking, but it doesn't even matter. Taco going to get one kill, but they're all going to get shut down. Sergey with the double and fallen in the corner. It's pretty, it's pretty interesting. But it's not enough. Just barely. Just barely not enough. Four to three. Gun's gonna be uh, coming back. That might have actually worked if it wasn't for the one player wrapping around. That yeah. was the one that really, really kind of sealed it. Well, especially when they were low on time, right? Like, that's the thing that makes that kind of around potentially scary if some of the people on the bomb side survive and stay hidden, and now yep. it's only like 15 seconds. Like, what if there was one guy in dark who just, like, popped out? Yeah. Here we go, double orb, orc, and a couple of M4s for MIBR, leading in round number eight. Let's see what they can do. This time, fighting a bit more aggressively are ends for Banana, or at least taking control of the bottom of it. See what happens if they want to 
spend more. Quite a few grenades already being exchanged over here, but nothing really comes of it. And MIBR, I guess, are the ones that really need to conserve those grenades right now. Zeus has an op. All right, let's see how this goes. Looking in towards Boiler, he's got Taco behind him as well towards Pit. Just waiting, there's the peak, there's the timing for Zeus, but he runs into the wall, and that's not ideal. Could have definitely been better, but still a big opening kill there, and Taco's friend for a long time, that's a bomb, down he gets a follow-up, just a couple of bullets left, and that was enough. Big double kill there for Taco. Smoke on top of Fallen, does he want to risk it walking through? He does, and Sergei's just waiting for him. Heads up play there, and now it's on for one versus two. Definitely can be clutched here. Last time he struggled with the player in Graveyard, there's no one here this time. Waiting for the smoke, he's got some utility of his own kit though. He's got to be fast and actually an awkward jump from Alu, but Fur can't catch the kill. He should know where both players are, and Alu's got to be careful, even with just 3 HP. There's the peek in, he's trying to bait it out. The nade, that's going to be a kill onto Alu for sure. And now he's got Sergei boxed in in the corner. Fur can do this, but he misses his chance. A valiant effort, and it just barely falls short. It really looked like as soon as you threw that grenade, he just counted him out. He was like, he's gone. I'm going to look in the corner. Which that was scary because like, he's still got two seconds where that thing blows yeah. up. <laughs> he could still peek up. I want to see MIBR get back. They were like way more sort of an aggressive on the defensive side in that first four rounds they run. Yeah. They, they, they had. This, this, is, this seems like MIBR is playing a little bit more passive, a little bit further back, possibly because of the economy. Possibly because the other style meant they just might not feel like it's sustainable, but at the moment, Ence is, Ence is loving having a lot of this space to work with. They do get a lot of map control early on, and, and they seem to be pretty good at um, manipulating the defense and figuring out who's where. Now they've got pistols back in the hands of the MIBR squad. Eagle, CC, or Zeus, which was like a classic for a little bit. It's his, his thing. Yeah, he was the, uh, he was the CZ player. Was that Atlanta? Yeah, I think that's when it started. No, that was Boston. Or was it Atlanta? I don't remember. It was one of the elite ones. Probably Boston then, wasn't it? It's when he was playing with the, uh, Liquid. Yeah. Well, they've got a kill on the Ooh. seven, and that's a good follow-up. I look going down. Taco's playing so well right now. He really is. Like, on an individual level, he looks, like, uh, crisper than we've, we've ever seen him. That's actually true, and he's also, he's the one doing all the yelling. He's, got, he's like, really, he's found himself within all the chaos of, of what's going on with his team. Maybe it was, like, a, you know, did you ever watch Space Jam? You know, like, the Monstars who come yeah. in and steal, like, you know, Ewing's powers and Muggsy yeah. Bogues? Maybe Taco did that with Cold. Oh. Put all his powers into his mouse. That's a that's a good idea. I like that as a team. Now, if, if you could develop that as a skill mode, you could really put together a team, couldn't you? You know. You could also, you know, theoretically ruin another team. Your your chief rival. That's a good point. Yeah. If you have those kind of magic powers, Moses, we should uh, <laughs> <laughs> find some investors or something. Yeah, I'll let you know if anything. Uh if oh. I discover any powers. Oh, big chance there, but Alexi and Ariel combining for a really great defense, and I think otherwise, look at how low they were. Alexi be on 23 health, Ariel on 2 health. They, I mean, they could have opened up something. They still would have had a hard time, I think, actually getting the defuse in, but 5-4, to four, and Ents are now back in the lead of this game, and I, I don't know, that's, that's going to be uh, an even bigger problem now for MIBR. Double digits, I believe, is what the desk is calling for, and right now... It's not looking likely. That seems almost out of reach. Barely is. Well, another chance. Fallen with the AWP. This is where you'd like to see him be uh, a tad bit... more assertive. And it's Taco who's gonna lead the way. Through the flames, he still somehow gets one. Flashbang assist, or flash assist from Fur. Oh, and look at this. Ence is making an adjustment. You could hear the communication just barely come out. They've readjusted. They're all the way up top. Man. It's Lucas and Zeus to defend here inside the bomb site and on top in the pit now is Lucas. They can't go way too far. Otherwise, they were all stacked up. He still picks up a kill, and that's not too bad at all. In fact, Zeus now scoped up with the Orc. Sees a bit of an elbow. Can he spring? Not down yet. And now they're going to go for the wide peak there. X7 able to pick him up. No problem. It did buy enough time for the rest of the B defense to show up. And... Right now, ends are boxed inside of the bomb site, and that's not always great. There's a Molotov on fur. If they can angle that into the bomb site, if they get the time for it, that's going to be huge. He's not trying it just yet. It's finally. Pro
Prime that he's ready for it. It's going to go way in the back. They get the kill and now Fallen on the other side. And Ariel up here. 15 health left. I'm not sure if Fallen knows if he would. I'm sure he did. I'm sure he would just pick up the pistol. There's the Krieg instead. And Fallen going to be able to pick that one up. Goes straight for the defuse. That's... I don't know, dangerously close yet again. Yeah, but Fallen really called the bluff of Ariel. I mean, he was just kind of waiting patiently outside the bomb set. Those shots Ariel gave up really made his position. Because you're right, I don't think Fallen necessarily knew he was going to be on top of that close left box. A very nice clutch, a very nice rotation, but it didn't have to get there. It, Lucas and Zeus, that, that combination they had, they had a very nice crossfire set up, but it's not the optimal position to take the fights. Lucas swings wide and takes a fight that Zeus can't be involved in. They're a little bit more patient there. Both of those guys are fighting at the same point, and they actually might even be able to wipe that out. So still a very sketchy buy because of all, all the repurchases and reinvestments that had to come in from the Brazilians. Zeus on the auto shotgun. Spring it all I out. think if there was a weapon in this game that epitomized Zeus's personality, it's probably the auto shotgun. I that agree. feels like a very Zeus weapon. I agree. It has like a certain level of like authority as well. Like you know, it's you... a lot of fun, but there is some power behind it as well. That's what I mean. Yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> Weird question for a first date. You know, if you, if you were a <laughs> if you were a CS:GO weapon, what would be? Yeah. You great. learn a lot about people, wouldn't you? You learn a lot about people very quickly with a question like that. Yeah. If someone says the P90, just get out. Get out quick. Somebody says the Zeus, you know, you also know, like, okay. It's one charge and it's done. Don't want, don't want to hear that. Uh, <laughs> no, <all> right. <laughs> I didn't expect you to take that angle. Cool little boost. Taco missed his chance. Had a quick opportunity that's missed. Yeah, it goes back into that little nin ninja corner of it, uh, arch. After having shown yourself that... Maybe they make a mistake and, and don't check it. Ents are also running out of money, so it's not impossible that if MIBR could win this round, they could start to get some control back in the game and, and maybe uh, take more of a lead than just a single round. Well, yeah, that's that's part of the importance of this round for MIBR. The other half of the coin is if they lose this, they don't have any money either because that previous round yeah. they just won came down to just fallen alive. So this could be a, a very back-breaking round for the defense or it could be a shot of life in the arm of MIBR. Oh, this is... Uh, that's, they're going to try and get out of the apartments with no flashbangs. There's not a single... Oh, there's one on that 7 but he's up there with them. I someone need to throw it. They're trying their very best. And Zeus not able to get the auto shotgun this time. Fallen going to pick up one kill with the MP9 before he's down. And now Lucas trying his very best. Taco showing up for a headshot and almost getting a second there on X7. But it's all on fur with the AWP coming in from the other bomb side, And I don't think this is worth it. He's so far away. It's, it's going to be questionable. I think he might just stick around, see if he can find a kill if someone on Ents makes a mistake. But this is, what, the third one on two he's had rotating over here? He's been he's not yeah. been successful in the previous two, but I, it might be the scoreline. He might be looking at 5-5 five, five and saying, you know what, I absolutely have to go for this. We need more defensive rounds. There's not a kit right now. Then, yeah. Fair I don't play. know if there's one on the ground, but... He needed to try something, and now, now it's worse, isn't it? Yeah, it is much worse. It's actually, it actually is one of the worst feelings when you've already made the choice to, to say, all right. But you're like, I got an off. I'll stick around and get one kill. Yeah. And now you've given them a free AWP. If you, uh, if if you had to choose one gun in Counter Strike that most describe your personality. Um. Uh, I don't know. That's a good question, Moses. I'm, so I'm trying to trying to I'm well, trying to think about how I'm not just setting myself up for a trap right now. We'll give you we'll give you half time. How about how about round sixteen? Okay, I'll think about it until then. Right. You do some rounds. I'll I'll think. About yeah, it. take your time. Deagle's out for MIBR. It's a truly desperate scenario now. Double nade, and that finds fur. And now Fallen is uh, pretty much all alone. Actually, he is entirely all alone. Gonna take the peak, tag Sergey once more, he's got him so low, can't find the kill, and now it's time for Fallen to back off. Nice attempt at finding the equalizer. Tough part for this defense now is they're all, they're all pretty much isolated, they're all pretty much on their own. One player in lane, one player on balcony. Yeah, they, I mean, you, you got deagles like this, you just need some really worthy headshots, like preferably one or two so that the pressure is on the T side, but right now Ants are also playing, they're playing sort of grouped up. That's a nice shot again, Taco. He's what? got 16 and 7. Why is he so good? I don't know. It's, it's happened just, I don't know. Overnight. Overnight. He just decided, you know what? I'm the one that's going to have to save this. No longer shackled the Cold Zera. It's like, it's time. It's my time to become the best player in the world. That would really be something. That doesn't happen a lot. 
I think I think I'm gonna go for I'm I'm gonna go for something like like the AWP mode. It's it's like a classic. It's it's been around for a long time. You could uh, you know use it to spy your neighbors through the windows. That kind of thing. <laughs> it's got all the it's got all the features. You know. It's the way you voluntarily made that creepy. <laughs> I tried to. Fi I tried. I figured there was no way that that it wasn't going to be twisted into that. So. You do have that super zoom phone, so it makes sense. I do have that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's it's hard. Like I I I I don't know how we can we can get off this topic, but. Well, here's what we can do, because you obviously had a terrible answer just now. Uh, to the to the community watching, make sure you send a tweet to us with what weapon and why you think perfectly describes Anders. Yeah, and would you go on a date with someone who asks asking questions like that, or would you just quickly say, you know what, I actually it's have not a, lot worth of, it. a lot of homework to do. <laughs> I need to leave. I'm, I'm sick tonight, so we're going to have to call the date off. Yeah, permanently. Seven to five, ladies and gentlemen, here, we're moving into round number 13, and the Deagles didn't really do what they were hoping for. Taco's just playing phenomenally. He's out everybody, including yeah. everybody on, on ends. Well, it's been seven of eight rounds over to the finish side as well. So after that first uh, four-round flurry from MIBR, once they lost control of the economy, they haven't been able to get it back. Ooh, that's good nade damage. That's really good nade damage from both sides, really, but it's it's actually the victory, and it's only Lucas to defend. The flashbang is going to be far too late. They've already got the wide angle, and Zeus needs to back away. What an odd exchange of nade damage that just comes out to work for Ants so much better. Yeah, you think when you see the first one go down there on Banana, that that's surely going to slow the uh, the incoming team down, but it just didn't. And now I'm wondering, he did put down a Molotov, didn't he, Lucas? Did they just run through it or did they actually smoke it out? I'm not sure, but regardless, it, it, it didn't have the stopping power that I was kind of hoping for, but that's going to be an eighth round for Ants. That's, that's a lot. They're really starting to make this work. Problem is, it's eight of nine. So now they've caught, they've caught some momentum. You know, they know exactly what's working. They have a really good feel for the game at this point. And obviously, when you've when you've won this many rounds, this in this fashion, you start feeling extremely confident as an individual. You're going to take more risks. You're going to be more aggressive. You're going to be more assertive in your beaks. So it just snowballs out of control. And that's a lot of what we're seeing out of the MIBR lineup. Not able to contain it. Doesn't really feel like there's much stopping power anymore on on the MIBR. So in the beginning, it was just that ends were able to get banana and, and top mid control, but now it feels like most of the fights are just not even close, but like just single-handedly being won by 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 ends. And it, it it comes down to these weird clutches, right? They have to try and sort of do one versus twos or or two versus threes, something to try and get back into a round. That's the thing as well. It's like it's not necessarily blaming him for the, or it's not blaming him in any way. But if we're been able to win like one of those one on twos, the A bomb site. Yeah, that could have made something. maybe a little bit different depending on when it comes out. But those are such tough asks. Sergey gonna lead the way up banana with the utility in his face. A big push coming in. He wants that fight. Oh, and he doesn't even realize it. Fallen slides right into his crosshair. Great returns from Fur to keep things into a three on three. Yeah, that's actually huge for Fur, but that's absolutely correct. And he gets one more Fur now with a triple, taking down Alu. Ariel ready to go for it, but Zeus will shut him down, saying no thanks at the boiler. And now it's X7 instead. One versus three for. Waiting for him to jump there, spot Nautic 7 hunting him, but he goes back for sticking around for it, and now on the corner, perfect timing, it's Taco to take a sixth round here for MIPR. Oh Six no, to eight. that was wild, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, Sergei's going to be super happy with that. Maybe not how it ended up overall, but that's kind of cool. It's always nice to get that second kill when you don't even really intend it. Collateral damage, I believe the uh, technical term is. Just... Is that what it is? I don't think that's... I'll give it to you. I mean... We'll settle this argument later, sweetheart. <laughs> yes, somebody... somebody help it. I don't know. <laughs> Eight to six. In the favor of Ents. Here we go towards Banana. A lot of early flashbangs. You can see all the streams over the wall. Just to hold that defense as ba at bay for as long as possible. Oh, I like this from Zeus. Just gonna miss the time. Ooh. That's a... That's a strange angle for Sergei to be checking that quickly. Well played on him. He's had a really good start to the Major. Yeah. For all the talk of how he's supposed to be the star player, and we've mentioned a couple times, they don't seem to necessarily need him to be like the superstar. He's, uh, he's opened this event up very, very powerfully. I think coming into today, he was leading in, uh, in rating overall for, for Major matches. Oh, really? Which was only one. 
but sure. But you gotta start somewhere. Here come the flashbang, set up against off the chimney. Seuss will pick up one kill and Taco down in the pit. Instant headshot, there's Seuss now with the AWP. And he's finally gonna get shot down, but a huge defense being put up here. And now Taco is waiting, buying time for Fallen to get here. He's gonna peek a little bit early. I think he probably wanted to see if they were actually still going for it, or if they just picked up the bomb to fall back. And it's another retake here, another one versus two, where somebody comes in from B to try and help out. And they are gonna slide back with the bomb. Oh, that's... That's heartbreaking if you're fallen. You, you at least wanted to get a shot as they cross into the bomb site. You would have loved that. When does he uh, make the determination? Is he just going to stick around? Yeah, he's not budging. So they'll get into the B bomb site, and I, I mean, it's going to be just another very difficult retake. There's a smoke that's picked up. Now they have the cross. Now they have the plant. Fallen's going to realize it. And this is a very, very difficult retake. Not impossible. He does have a kit, and he has a smoke as well. If he can find one kill, drop that smoke on the bomb, that might be his best chance. Pistols out. Sergei's got the dualies for some godly reason. Fallen trying to walk in, but he doesn't check. Oh, he still gets the kill. I can't believe it. He should have been dead ten times over in that moment. And Fallen now, still a tiny chance here, but time's going to be running out. There's the smoke on top of the bomb, and he's going to get shot down instead. Nice timing there. Nine to six in favor of ends at the end of the first half. What a great recovery. They're never too deep into a hole, but down zero to four, and you end nine six. That is a crazy run. Nine to two to close out the half. We're heading to a break. When we come back, we'll have the conclusion of this map. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's Ents and MIBR here on Inferno for a best of one with the Finnish team leading the uh, game 9-6. to six. And that was on the T side. They got those nine rounds and most of them just would like almost all of them towards the end of the, the half. That was pretty incredible. Yeah, it really was. And I mean, they, there wasn't any big, huge change in how they kind of played the offense that I noticed. But I, I think the big one was, we, you know, I mentioned it early on, MIBR got a little bit more passive. Remember, they had that great, you know, ult mid push and execute that they did perfectly. And you can't run that too often on your CT side, but that aggression is what they, they really felt like they were missing. A lot of space for Ents to work with in that first half, and now it's their job to deny that space to MIBR. Quick in towards Halls. Fallen has smoke two flashes. Gonna flash them out. Um, oh, wait. They're actually making a lot of noise. They the old just... around the world, Anders. Yeah, I love that. It's brilliant. Now they need to run back to Banana and then back to the apartments again. You never see it that, that. Especially if you're crab walking. Cra that's the only time I really accept the dualies as a purge if you crab walk out of swamp with them. <laughs> then, we're, then we're golden. <laughs> X7 gonna be falling back and he's not have any grenades and he's alone over on this side so have they found a way to do this? Is it really gonna be working out? They're certainly setting up for a couple of grenades. Seuss has got the Molotov as well. So he's ready for it. Smoke towards Coffins, one towards CT spawn and X7 to try and see if he can play around it a little bit. He's got some backup and a counter flash coming out. A huge one from Alexi B, but he can't take down Taco. And X7 has to fall back, but he can't really escape. They're all around him. And eventually he goes down. Taco's still fighting, looking for a third kill, and he almost gets it. One single health left on Alu for a second. Taco wants more. He's picked up now the P2000 instead. And looking for a headshot on Sergey. He's so lethal right now. They're getting close, and finally they're gonna overpower him. Taco going down. 
But now it's a 2 on 2. Seuss and Lucas still here, and Seuss just got to charge Ariel, taking him down with the glove running, and Sergei alone. And he goes down. Seuss with a huge double to clutch the round. That is a massive piss round for Mabier to take. Now, both in this map. What a performance from Taco that we're seeing so far. Not only in that piss round, but you could even accept the fact that at the end, he probably stuck around for that fight way too long, but why not? He's got 21 and 9. He's obviously on fire. He's feeling it. And just go test it out in a game where you need to make a comeback a game where you have your coach playing for you. See what else you can provide. A seventh round for MIBR. And there it is again. He's just loving it, isn't he? Winning the pistol on that second half. Definitely nice. Oh, they're going for the... They, they're, to, they're stealing half the tactic there. I think MIB had all five players in B, but... <laughs> still. Yeah, they did. They are going for the boost. Now, if that top guy had a Seuss, Jason, You then could run boost him around the corner is what you're thinking. Yeah, just as they push, you just just run him out. Did you see that weird uh, mid-peak that was on Reddit the other day? Yeah, where people jump off the canopy? Yeah. I that did see that. pretty crazy. How many times do you think he tried that before he got it? Uh, a fair few times. <laughs> and I think if he did it in a game... Like, actually did it, you would probably just die. Yo, if you do that in a game environment, I don't care if you die. That's, that's god tier levels. Well, maybe we can get a chance one day. Sergey so, okay, picks up a kill, but the Mac 10s are just overpowering everybody else. Good amount of money on foot for that round. And that almost ties it up. Now, 8 to 9. We'll see what happens when ends start to pick up rifles, which they should be doing right now. That's the thing. Can MIBR go on like another early spree where they just kind of control the pace of the game, control the economy for the first four or five rounds of this half? That would be that would be wonderful, obviously, if you're an MIBR fan. But as we saw, Ants, a pretty experienced team, even despite the fact that you know they they haven't necessarily been part of the pro scene for a super long time. But when you get to the finals of a major, that increases uh, your experience tenfold. Nice nade, nice utility work, and nice holding of the line for Alexi B. 18 kills on the player that is soon to no longer be part of this roster. Yeah, that was handled exceptionally well. It, it, it like they, even, they couldn't even make it around the corner there. They just got absolutely shut down. 3 to 5, though. I'm not sure what the plan is at this point. I mean, the traditional wisdom will tell you, go to B if you lose uh, one or two players. Well, they're being patient about it because they would like a mistake. They would like someone to peek. They would like to find that one kill to soften things up. But you can see just in the positions of Ants, especially over towards that A bomb site, Sergey committed to the bomb site, Ariel and Pit. Like, no one is making a mistake. No one's pushing on that side of the map. Alu is so safe by CT spawn. And he's going to be very quick towards this B bomb site. He will be smoked off, but he can uh, provide some fire just spamming through. Seuss with the Molotov going to go in behind new box back there. Not going to be doing too much since no one's there. The forward one might. A bit of damage onto X7. I think it doesn't actually reach into the corner, which you can make it do. So he's going to be safe there. Are they going to check it? Yeah, they will still try, but Fur is going to be going down. And now Seuss on 12 health. It's not looking good. The bomb plant. Oh, that's. Oh, it's going to happen. Alexi B will take it down through the coffins. And Lucas, no chuck whatsoever. It actually be the nice triple in this round. And ends now going to be a 10 to 8. That was, so overall, a really nicely handled round from uh, ends. Very well done. Yeah, just, I mean, after those kills, just get, you fall back into the bomb set and they play it perfectly. You allow, you know, your, your superior numbers and your teamwork to win the round for you. Alu coming over, doesn't even spam through the smoke, just throws that pop flash, buys them a little bit of time, allows them to get ready for the hit. And Ents now off to the races. Another buy for MIBR, but they must win it. They're out of money after this. And then once you give Ents the control of the economy on the CT side of Inferno, you start getting the AWP out in Alu's hands. That's surely coming very, very soon. And that's when things get even more difficult. Oh, the timing there. They run right through the smoke. Sergei's there to catch them. I think that's pretty lucky, because otherwise, there is a world which Alu is still fiddling around with that grenade. As they're just up to the corner. He gets the kill right through the smoke, and he's going to continue to take down Susan. Now, I don't know what to say. That's that's not ideal. No, it's obviously a bit fortunate for Alu, but also the Tracer's coming through, so he kind of knew exactly uh, knew the area to aim at. But yeah, a bit of a disjointed hit coming up through that smoke. 
And I think this is where it happens. I think this is where MIBR fizzles out. I would be, I'd be very impressed if they had a little bit of fight left in them to, to make this an interesting second half. But I think Ents, at this point, is just going to run away with it. Sergey's gone down. I almost feel like at this point, like, Alu might even just drop a gun over and pick up the off. Not quite yet. They've punched themselves out, you know, in the first four rounds. Is that what we're saying? Exhaust the themselves, the rope it out. Yeah. Just couldn't handle it anymore. It's a little bit rough, isn't it? I mean, if it works, but um, <laughs> but it's hard to hard to shut down a team like Ents in like five rounds, you know. Yes. Then you need like back-to-back -back aces, knife kills, you know, really really need to stomp them, you know. A lot of really magical things need to happen. Alu's going to feel the pressure as well. That nade, they don't actually step forward. They had to have known utility was coming after that smoke makes its appearance, but they're actually coming up here very very quietly. Yeah, but there are so many people on the other side. Like, three people could be just to shoot at them at any moment. He's gonna get a little bit overrun. He does get a kill. Long range there for Alexi with a Krieg. He'll handle himself just fine. Sue's hiding in the corner, but he's gonna be alone. He cannot finish anything there. Alexi will be able to survive on 33 health with a triple kill. And that ends now at four rounds. I don't know if... Uh, I mean, I kind of do agree. And also with the money now, any kind of banana take is gonna be... Gonna I be see your best. Home. Yeah, you get carpet bombed over there, don't you? Nobody likes that. Yeah, if you combine that as well with Alu now having that AWP, it's finally brought out. Round 21 on the CT side. And he has a spawn for a mid-peak if he wants to go for it. Four Kriegs on the T side, not a whole lot of utility. It'd be great if they could find this pick, and I don't even think he's going to swing wide enough for Lucas to get a chance, but alt mid, that's his baby. He wants that kill. Taco's out of the fight. That is a classic Alu play. It is a classic, and even though you know it's happening, it's you still have to sort of like remind yourself that um, that there is that opportunity. He loves that alt mid peak. I mean, he just putting you know, trust in God that no one's going to peek mid when he looks left. He's found an opening kill. Another chance here. He waits patiently for the second player after the jump. Holds his nerve and the trigger. Twelve to eight. A five-on-three advantage for the Finnish defense. Yeah, this is starting to look way too good. It might be, uh, I'm not sure what the solution is. I would have said, the way that Taco is playing right now, try and have him just open up somewhere. But he obviously got shut down in this round before he got even the chance to. <laughs> yep, he's just going to be standing right on top of it. Such a, such a mean position, isn't it? It's so hard, and you feel you feel defenseless. And you must feel defenseless against Alu at the moment. Triple kill, he goes for the peak to follow up. They need to recover that AWP. Wouldn't be the biggest thing in the world if they couldn't, but preserve a little bit more money. 13 to 8. 23 kills on Alexi B now. Anders, this guy on Twitter said that you were a PP Bison. How's that make you feel? I don't know. That's, um... That's a little bit offensive. I'm gonna lie. <laughs> I will not accept this insult. I will not stand for it. I feel like that's more like that's more, that's the, more like Chad. I think Chad's the PP bison. Yeah, maybe more like an MP9 or something like something high high pitched sounding, but with like a lot of ammunition. You know, <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> Zeus uh, tried to try to make his way out of the underpass there, but got absolutely shut down. And we've got pistols, really, only on the uh, Brazilian side, so things are starting to look real rough right at the moment. Taco close up to the smoke, but Alu, they, they just don't have an answer for this AWP. He's got a triple kill in this round. He had a triple in the previous. Saved from behind by Sergey, and even Fallen can't get anything sneaking through the smoke. But at least he's laughing at all. <laughs> all. <laughs> he's looking very jolly, isn't he, for, uh... for this score? Just, yeah, in spite of the fact that the Finnish Kraken is just, I don't know, sinking their entire <laughs> ship, isn't it? All the sailors getting, getting eaten. <laughs> Paint me a picture. What's it look like? <laughs> Legs, limbs being torn off? Yeah, I think that's how it works. Like, it's got that gi giant beak in the middle, doesn't it? So, you know, like, they just get dropped So this in. is like the Pirates of the Caribbean Kraken. That kind of Kraken, okay. yeah. I don't know what there is. There should be more Kraken movies. I think it's such a great concept. I wish we could have more. But, um... 
It's it's either that. Some of them, you know, like the tentacles themselves, like the, the little cups have like teeth as well, so it could be something like that. I'm not sure. I'm not either. Ariel's got a kill though. Fur is uh, no longer in the fight, not clearing his right in halls. It's a good defensive stack there. Likely the first time MIBR saw it. But another man advantage for Ents, which, I mean, MIBR has just struggled in this half to find opening kills, to find man advantages. Especially once Alu got the AWP in his hands. I think he's had six kills with it in the two full rounds he's played. He's very f sort of fluid with that weapon once once he feels comfortable and just walks around shooting people left and right. It's it's actually super cool to watch though because it is a very like team centric affair as his opping. Like you could see in the previous round, he got a couple kills in mid, rotates through CT spawn to come library, and a pop flash comes in for his teammates so he can safely peek it. And he's obviously this is a bit of a heat check. Fallen doesn't expect that whatsoever, but Alu's not scared to step around the edge of that smoke. They recover the bomb, but they're boxed in even if they don't know it yet. If they have to go back out of Banana, they're going to run into possibly even more trouble. They have a single smoke and a flashbang on Zeus to try and make their way through. That's, that, that has got to be the best flashbang of all time if it has to end the bomb side. And they just got a little bit of luck with that Molotov going out, but it's not going to matter. Week 7 and Alexi B and Alu for the finished touches. Eight AWP kills for Alu in three rounds. Yeah, he's turning up uh, the heat, isn't he? Just decided, you know what, the, the, we, let's just win this game really quickly. And they are kind of doing that. 15 to 8 at the moment. So then, yeah, they're not playing with their food. They're not, you know, giving them our false hope just to tear it out of their out of their hands at the end. You know, finishing them off quickly. That's good. I think uh, no reason to uh, to prolong, you know, any pain. Pain and suffering, yeah. No, not really. And we just haven't seen, like, I mean, I, I think this, this is w what you could expect. And I think one of the reasons why people say, yeah, well, it's hard to imagine that, that MIB are going to be putting up a ton of really good games. It's just hard to find answers to, to some of the challenges that are being uh, posed here. I mean, Alu with the AWP is definitely one of them. But at the moment, ENDS do look like much more of a functional dynamic team than MIBR do. Alu. Molotov in case they try and come through. Almost no weapons at all on the MIBR side. I like this on Taco though, shooting through the windows. You know the hallway that Looking. leads down to the to the to the actual uh, balcony? Yeah. There's like a door that's halfway open, there's a window in there you could shoot through as well. Okay. Any usefulness in that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, Alu, another one out of the air. Zeus finally puts him down with the Deagle. But the damage has been done, and even if they try and pick up the pace and wrap on the bomb site, no one was actually with Zeus. Ariel and Pit, Sergei in the bomb site, Alexi and CT spawn rotating over. And for MIBR, they've backed off just a bit. I think Lucas and Fur must be hoping Zeus gets a pick with that op on the on someone rotating over to help. He's Try to cause a distraction by throwing out that smoke. We're down to 25 seconds, and that's the thing that's, that's actually really worrisome at the moment. Oh, he tries, but it goes for it! Shutting down Ariel. Just leave it to Zeus to try and crack open this round. Deagle killed and steals the AWP, and now can they take down X7? That's what they need to do here. Looking the wrong way. Lucas also in a bit of trouble. He's going to be dropped, and Zeus can he finish it off. Nine seconds, and it's not going to be enough. X7 will take him down. 16 to 8 at the end, as Ents will pick it up. Yeah, they didn't have a smoke for that cross right at the end. That was uh, a tad bit heartbreaking for him. But either way, very, very good look for Mentz. We have so many teams that have come in with impending lineup changes, with rosters that we already know what they're going to be, with